Good morning, and welcome to this virtual gathering for spiritual practice. I'm Reverend Michael Mugford, and I'm part of the ministry team at Cole Harbor Woodside United Church, along with the Reverend Krista Elizabeth Wynn, and I'm pleased to be with you this morning. This morning, I invite you to think about companionship. In this time of social distancing and quarantine, it's important that we feel we're not alone and that we are still in companionship with others. In our United Church Creed, we begin with the affirmation that we are not alone and that in all aspects of life, God is with us. We must remember, however, that God often comes to us in the form of other people. And so our heavenly companion needs us to be with one another as much as God's spirit is with each of us. As Jesus was preparing his followers for the events of Holy Week that is coming up next week, he shared these words with his followers, with his disciples, to talk about the way of companionship that he sees with them and they with God. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit, yet every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Amen. In his book, The Four Loves, author C.S. Lewis writes, Friendship arises out of mere companionship, when two or more of the companions discover that they have some common insight or interest or even taste which others don't have, and which until that moment they believe to be his own or her own unique treasure or burden. The typical expression of friendship would be something like, what? You too? I thought I was the only one. He goes on to say, it is when two such persons discover one another, when, whether with immense difficulties and semi-articulate fumblings, or with what would seem to us to be amazing elliptical speed, they share their vision. And then that friendship is born. And instantly, they stand together in an immense solitude. End quote. It is companionship, I think, that leads us from one stage of life to the next and to the next. Many people believe that as human beings, there is something so deep in our psyche that we actually cannot be alone, that we literally need the presence of another in order to survive this life and to thrive. Sometimes that other is a person. Sometimes it's a beloved pet or animal companion. But either way, there is a need fulfilled by contact with another of God's creation. The word companion comes to, into use around 1300 of the Common Era and is always used to describe one who accompanies or associates with another. It finds its origins from the old French compagnon, which means fellow or mate, friend, partner. This, in turn, likely finds its origins in the Roman Empire from the late Latin companionum or companio, which literally means bread fellow, mess mate. It's derived from the Latin com, 
which is with or together, and panis, bread. So the deeper meaning of the word has a resonance that is deeper than just an acquaintance, but rather it is a relationship with someone that is on a much deeper or intimate level, that one would literally sit down and break bread and eat together. This is one of the reasons I believe that in the gospel records, especially in Luke, so much of Jesus' ministry happens around a table of food. So when Paul, writing to the church in Philippi, asks them to make his joy complete by being of one mind and by being companions of Christ, he's asking them no small thing in Roman standards. Paul is appealing to the Spirit of God within the individual and the community to show forth in love and in unity in Christ. And that is our call today. It's our call today as well to show forth unity and love in Christ because of our companionship with each other and with Christ. We are called to do this in all our relationships. The famed pilot Amelia Earhart wrote, The more one does and sees and feels, the more one is able to do, and the more genuine one's appreciation of the fundamental things like home and love and understanding compassion, companionship. Amen to that. Paul writes to the church in Philippi, Therefore, if any of you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Amen. Many years ago, <clears throat> when I was at a youth gathering at what used to be the Maritime Conference Youth Forum, we sang a song called Companions on a Journey by Carrie Landry. And I leave you today with words from that song as a blessing. We are companions on a journey, breaking bread and sharing life. And in the love we bear is the hope we share, for we believe in the love of our God. No longer strangers to each other, no longer strangers in God's house. We are fed and we are nourished by the strength of those who care. May God be your companion this day and into the time to come. Amen.